Hello everybody, I'm coming to you from an extremely messy, messy house. There is stuff everywhere. This was our Buy Whole Foods online order that probably came over a week ago, but it's still sitting there. So Fanya's here, Tommy's here too. Hi. Tommy's having some breakfast. But it's really a true reflection of where our heads have been at and our lives have been at over the past two months, which is exactly why I wanted to do a bit of a sit down with you and give you an update video with what's been going on. It's only just been the past few days that I feel that I've kind of been pulling myself back together. I've actually been sleeping a lot because I wasn't getting any sleep, but now I feel like it's flipped and I'm actually getting too much sleep and I'm actually feeling quite sluggish. But I do think that's a lot to do with exhaustion. I think I'm just exhausted like mentally, physically, in every single way. And there is just so much to be getting on with, as you guys can see in the house. I have to do so much catching up for work and then preparing for the next part of life. Literally, like we are not messy people. If you know us, we're very organized. So this actually adds a little bit more stress on top, but I'm trying to not let it affect me. But we also have the old coffee table here, which we're getting rid of. It's on our gym mats and on bin bags to not wreck the new rug. Then I've got an unboxing pile, which I'm gonna get through today. I've actually got a few sustainable pieces that I really wanna go through with you. So I'm gonna do that in today's video as well. Once I've sat down with you, we'll finish it off with a little try on. And then we've cleared out the office completely for what we need to use it for next, which I will sit and explain to you. But yeah, as you can see, it's very full on. I feel and look, just there, basically. <laughs> I can see like my face is puffy, my eyes are all over the place, but you know what? It is what it is. I can't fight it. I just have to flow with it. So I'm gonna get comfortable. Basically what has happened, let me get comfortable. Um, so just after my birthday and my mum's birthday, which I actually vlogged and it was just the best time. We had such a great time. Myself, my mum, everybody enjoyed themselves. But then two days later, I'm smiling, but it wasn't funny at the time. I just think life can be funny sometimes. But two days later, we go to my mum's to pick her up to go out for the day and find her at the bottom of her stairs in a very, very, very bad way. She basically fallen down the stairs and had been lying there for about 12 hours because she couldn't reach her phone. Thank God that we were coming to pick her up. So it was really early. It was like 7.30 in the morning and that's how we found her. So you can imagine the absolute shock when we walked in the door. Obviously at the time we didn't know what exactly had happened and we didn't know her, the state of her injuries or anything, but because of what we could work out and the fact that she couldn't get up, once the ambulance came, they um, strapped her up, you know, neck, everything, and then carried her into the ambulance, took her to the hospital. It was just so distressing because they were with her in her house on the floor for two hours before they moved her into the ambulance. And I think that's got to do with like COVID and they have to assess her and put everything through like a computer now before they take you to hospital, which was freaking me out, if I'm honest with you, because I just wanted her to get to the hospital to make sure she was okay. And then obviously after that, I can't really remember much of that day or that week for that matter. The communication wasn't the best from the hospital, which was just another stress on top of everything else. I really had to sort of fight to get any information. But basically the injury that she sustained from the fall was that she shattered her thigh bone, or her left thigh bone, so into pieces, basically, and obviously would need an operation. And that operation got delayed for nearly six days, I think five, six days, because of uh, COVID in the hospital. They needed to test her several times. It was just an absolute nightmare. And then they decided that it would be best to operate on her while she was awake which again, panicked me completely. But my mum is a very strong cookie and she got through it all. I actually didn't get to see her at all. So the whole time I wasn't allowed in the hospital, I managed to get into the hospital to give her food. Obviously I had to cook for her every single day and make sure she was getting her juices and her supplements and 
all of that, which she has got and has still getting to this day. But I couldn't go in. So I didn't actually see my mum for about a month. So then after the operation, we had a few complications. So one of them was that she had clotting in her lungs, which is quite normal for somebody that's had quite a extensive operation because the blood isn't circulating. Um, she's not moving. She's very sedentary. She's just sitting there or has been sitting. Well, she still is sitting. And that can cause clotting to the lungs. So that was another issue that came up afterwards that was quite scary. And I don't know whether it was just the breakdown of communication from the doctors that they just weren't very good or I don't know they like to be dramatic I don't know there were several times throughout the experience where it didn't look good let me just put it that way but I just made sure to keep on top of the hospital and I just kept that communication going anyway they immediately treated her for the clots and she's still on that medication until her next scan. But she has now left that hospital, or she left that hospital about two weeks ago, and she's now in a rehab hospital, which is a lot closer to home, where she is currently staying. But she is non-weight-bearing, so she's not allowed to put any weight on that leg at all. At all. And we thought that was coming to an end this week, but she went for a scan on her leg and it's healing a little bit slower. So she's now non-weight bearing for another month, meaning she cannot put any weight whatsoever in that leg because they've basically put a like rod, like a metal rod where the bone is and a load of screws and plates. And what they want is the bone to grow around that rod. But she's very good with her legs. She can do all the exercises that she's been told to do, which is positive. But yeah, being non-weight bearing is very, very difficult and makes it difficult for everybody around and also with like the next steps to her recovery. So going forward, I obviously have to look after my mum. I wouldn't have it any other way, but uh, she will have to come and stay with me, which is why we are emptying that room because that's where she will be staying. I've actually just had the nurses, could they basically come and assess the house to see what she'll need and if it's suitable, if she can move around, etc. So they've come and now they're putting an order in for the equipment that she'll need, which will be arriving in the next few days and will be ready for her. When she comes back, I have no idea, but it's better to be prepared than not be prepared. So that's basically what's been going on in a nutshell. It means that we're not going away this year. This is probably the first year in my life that I've not gone to Italy for the summer. We had it planned to go to Poland and Italy. We should already be there. We were going to leave a week after the time my mum fell. But I just see it as God's plan. There's a reason why we haven't gone and there's a reason why we need to be here. I have peace with that, although it's very difficult scrolling through Instagram and seeing people on the Amalfi Coast. Oh, I'm just going to have an extra amazing holiday next year. That's for sure, because I'm already exhausted and I've planned to write my life off up until Christmas to prioritise my mum and her recovery and health. So that's what I will be doing. But I definitely feel better for that month afterwards. I honestly don't know where my head was at, as you can probably imagine. Thank God I have Stefania and we both have the strength and ability to continue with our day in the way that we need to and to have dealt with the situation as it came up. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the people that have been around me supporting me and that care for me and love me. Honestly, like I just... I'm so grateful. But I'm definitely in a better place. Like I mentioned earlier, I do feel exhausted. Um, and I don't mean that I haven't slept. I just feel just in my body and in my mind. Like my brain is working a little bit differently. I think it's a bit slow. Like I can't, like I can't find words sometimes or I'm being very forgetful, but I'm guessing that is down to the stress. I also think that I've had a little bit of hair loss. My hair feels a little bit thin and I remember the same thing happening when my nonna, my grandmother passed and got ill four years ago. It's obviously not as bad, that that situation was a lot worse, but I do feel that there's a bit thin into my hair and my face had a bit of a breakout, which I've covered up obviously, um, but I can just tell in my face, you know, sometimes you can just tell, it just feels 
really puffy and then my eyes go a bit skew or one's bigger than the other. You guys probably don't notice it, but I do. But anyway, it is what it is. I completely accept it because, you know, things can't just be perfect all the time. And I'm just so grateful that my mum is okay. And I mean, okay, it could have been a lot worse. The way she fell and the way that the house is laid out, she could have easily been paralysed. She actually smashed her face against a wall when she fell. So when she first, um, her first week in hospital, all the bruising came up and she had bruising. Like the, I've never seen a whole face bruised in my life. And she had like panda eyes, which at the beginning we thought um, was a brain injury. The ambulance guy said that that's usually a sign. So that was another thing that absolutely panicked me. But my mum is completely fine and her brain is working fine and she's not forgotten anything or acting in any sort of odd way. So even though this is a very difficult situation and um, she has really, really hurt her leg, it could have been worse. I just thank God that it isn't as bad as it could have been. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling on because you guys get the gist, but I just wanna say thank you to all of you that have been sending me messages throughout the whole time. The amount of love and support has just been overwhelming and I love you guys, I really do. You're very special to me. You're very close to my heart and thank you. Um, but anyway, I am gonna get on with unboxing stuff. I'm gonna do a few bits with you now. The remainder of it I do over on my Instagram. So guys, go over there to follow me and see what else I got. But on this channel, I'm gonna keep it more sustainable fashion because I've got a few really nice pieces. But if there's anything else in there, I'll show you. I need to get going because the day is running away with me. Let me get these boxes open and I'm gonna show you a few bits. I've just seen that there is a accessory here, a vegan sustainable handbag. So I'm gonna start off with this. It is from a brand called Fenella Smith London. And you can see the bag comes in this bright yellow dust bag. These colors don't really match, but the bag standing alone is this beautiful red, like it looks a bit lighter on camera, but it is definitely like a rich red, like bloody red tone. You've got the uh, branding in gold there. It's very simple. Oh my God, the feeling, like I just, I don't know why, I just expect them to feel quite plasticky and rigid, but this is so soft, it's so buttery. All of the bags are so colorful and my go-to is always neutral colors, like blacks and beiges, but I just thought with this brand, going with their vibe, I would pick out a bold color. So I thought a nice red bag is something that I need to add to my collection although my vegan handbag collection is very small, but I'm working on it. And I have seen some bags that I want in blacks and beiges and stuff like that. So this is definitely the color I was gonna go for. I obviously wouldn't wear it with what I'm wearing now, but in the summer I wear a lot of white. So I thought this would just be a lovely pop of color with those outfits. It's a nice size. It's a bit bigger than I would usually wear. You can see, there is a lot of space in there. And then you have like a zip closure in the middle. And you've also got one here as well, so you can put all your valuables. And then you've got two like pockets here for like phones and stuff like that. So it's a really practical bag. It also comes in like a black sort of croc effect and green. I seriously cannot get over the quality, like how soft this is. They have so many bags, they have bucket bags and purses, all very colorful. So if you want to add a bit of color into your life, then definitely check them out. I have a few bits here from Colorful Standard, so I'm gonna get them on and show you. So I got this two-piece loungewear set from Colorful Standard, and I've got this whole set in white, and I absolutely love it, but I'm very aware that winter is around the corner, as you can see. <laughs> And with the white one, you know, it can get dirty. It's not something you want to really wear too much in the rain. So I thought I'd go for a darker color. If you know about Colorful Standard, you'll know that they just do the same thing in many colors, which is a dream of mine, because when I find something I like, I just want it repeated in colors. So this is like a, it's like a washed out brown. I think it's color taupe. I'm not sure, but I'll double check and I'll link it below. But these are the high-waisted, 
joggers and I've got them on in a small and you can see um, there's room in them and then there's the long sleeve crew neck which I have on in a medium. I'm now wondering if I should maybe try the small. I have tucked it in, as you can see, but I might just try the small to see, but I will definitely be getting these in many other colors. There's like a greeny blue, like a washed out greeny blue color I love, just waiting for it to come into stock. But I've just popped this on with my Privato trainers that I live in, and yeah, this is so comfortable and perfect for this sort of weather that we have going on in the UK. You can throw a jacket over it and just be very comfortable and also feel quite put together. I also picked up these shorts. Um, this is new in, in the colorful standard range. They're their high-waisted shorts. I can't remember the exact name, but I'll link them below for you. And I picked them up in this lovely lilac color, but it's not coming through on the camera for some reason. They look a little bit gray, but they are like a soft, beautiful lilac which I thought would just look so lovely with a tan when I eventually get one. I got this in a medium and I think I may need to try the small because that's the most I can tie it without this all bunching together. I just got the medium thinking I needed a bit more space for like my thighs and my bum because they're bigger. But I think the style of this short is like that anyway. So I think this part would probably stay quite similar to the medium. It's just the waist like you can see that I have a lot of space and I will definitely be getting a few more colors. I want something like quite bright, I think. I'll get a nice bright fuchsia pink or something like that. The thing I wanted to show you was this from Chelsea Piers. It's part of their wellness project, um, sustainable pajama range. Going on with the lilac theme, it's a beautiful lilac colored silk feeling. Um, palm tree kimono. I think that this is a bit too small for me. I'm not gonna turn around because you will see my bottom, but maybe it's meant to be this short, I'm not sure. I got this in a small, I think. So this would definitely need to size up, but it's a beautiful color. Again, if I had a turn, I think it would really pop. It's got lovely kimono sleeves and it's got this gorgeous like fuchsia pink piping along the lapels and the cuffs. It's a very, very lovely kimono. They do so many different styles and patterns and colors. You'll have to take a look for yourself, but I'll link this one below. It's lovely quality. It feels lovely on the skin. And another one for holiday, a holiday that I'm not going on. <sighs> I'm gonna have to create a holiday vibe at home somehow. I'm not sure, but this will definitely help. It truly makes me so happy to find so many great brands that are sustainable and producing really good quality pieces. It really just makes me so happy because for a long time I've been getting really fed up with fast fashion and the brands that we that are only available to us on the high street. I remember there being a period where I really struggled to even shop. I didn't know what to buy because I was, you know, in between. So these brands have really helped with it. And that's the reason I share it with you guys because I found it so hard to find brands and obviously I've done my research and I'm in contact with a lot of brands so I really want to show them to you and share them through my platforms and hopefully you guys start shopping there or already do and I absolutely love doing these videos so guys let me know if you enjoy these sort of trial videos um, of me just unboxing what I've bought and then showing you or if you kind of prefer the like fashion-y ones or both or something else just let me know comment below but I'm gonna wrap up today's vlog here we are going to the theatre tonight myself and Stefania we thought we'd book something in because when my mum arrives both of us won't be able to go out together it's one or the other so we thought we'd get a few theatre dates in because that's our thing we love it so we're going to watch the Windsors the end game it's near Leicester Square in the Prince of Wales theatre so I'm gonna get ready and go and enjoy the evening, I'm very excited. If you've already watched The Windsors, comment below, let me know what you think, is it good? I've heard good things. But anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video and always sharing your love and support. It honestly means the world. Remember to subscribe if you loved this video, then share it with others and obviously like and comment and all that good stuff. I'm on Instagram, guys. It's at Honestly Alessandra, where I will be sharing all of the pieces that I've shared today and more. 
um, styled up for you guys to inspire you further. But guys, look after yourself and stay safe and I will see you next week.